The discussion on holistic health and wellness is an ongoing one in the country. Now creative and uh, sporting talents such as artists and athletes face a number of health challenges in their line of work that sometimes does not receive the rigorous attention and support they may need. Bahai to Dumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we look at the wellness program titled Silapa, which is an initiative by the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture aimed at promoting of the well-being of artists and sports people. And bring in my guest tonight is Zandi Lentenzazi, who is the project manager of the Silapa Wellness Program. Just to tell us more on what exactly it aims uh, to achieve, she's joining me in studio this evening. Uh, Mem Zazi, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. I mean, um, you know, maybe let's kick off the conversation by looking at uh, mm. what uh, the program is all about and, uh, you know, its intended purposes. So this is a, a wellness intervention program uh, which aims at uh, assisting artists and athletes mm. uh, with various issues. You know, your mental issues, uh, it offers legal advice, it offers financial advice amongst others. So um, this is a program that was launched by the former Minister of uh, Sport, Arts and Culture. It was launched in 2021. Uh, which was um, during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. If you recall, back then, uh, artists went through a lot. You know, they could not work. Yeah. Um, and that resulted in some of them committing suicide or some of them um, getting into depression, amongst uh, other things. And so it was when now it was decided by the former minister that they should create this intervention so that they can assist the artist. Initially, it was only meant for artists when it was launched, but later on, then it was now um, decided that it should assist not only artists, but also athletes as well. Mm. Um, I mean, speaking about, uh, you know, what might have prompted uh, the uh, initiative, I mean, you look at, um, you know, various athletes that have not only uh, you know, struggled during the COVID-19 pandemic, but you mm -hmm. look at just the financial well-being of, mm -hmm. of, of athletes. I mean, yes. those that maybe received uh, major sponsorships and then at the end they did not have the financial, uh, you know, literacy to mm -hmm. who deal with their finances. And at the end, they ended up, uh, you know, just uh, being broke, if yes. I may put it that way. Uh, but, you know, I, I, what are the different elements in some of the key focus areas of, uh, of the program and exactly how will it work? It is um, legal advice. We provide free yeah. advice on legal matters. We provide free advice on, on financial uh, issues because, you know, it's important for artists to, to know how to spend their money. And also we know that artists, most of the time, they deal with contracts. It's important to understand the contract that you are signing before you are signing it. Yeah. So that, you know, when things happen with your work, then you are not caught surprised. You've understood exactly what it is that you are getting yourself into. We also deal with, we've got an, a 24-hour call center, yeah. which artists and athletes can call in at any time. If maybe you want to talk about any issues, maybe you are going through, uh, you dealing with grief, to yeah. make an example. Because we've seen it since that some artists, like for an example, you know, you lose a loved one, or you find yourself depressed, you want to talk about the way that you're feeling, there is that call center. But my colleague, uh, Ronald, because workforce, they are implementing this program on behalf of the department. He's going to come in and talk more to those elements and the services which are offered by the Celapa program. Mm. So how do you, um, I mean, so is it going to be an issue of them calling in or you'll be able to identify, uh, you know, those that are in need? You know, we, we, we try by all means. So we've got, we're running something called a community platform where you need to register 
And if you register, it means you become part of a community. You become part of different topics that are being discussed yeah. uh, on, the, on the community platform. So it's very important for artists and athletes to register and be part of this community because we deal with a lot of different topics such as financial, legal, you know, the ones that I've mentioned. Yeah. And if maybe you want specifically to talk about your feelings, then there's a call center which runs 24 seven. You're more than welcome to call in and discuss whatever issues that you want to be discussing. But those issues, they need to be part of the services that are being offered by the program. Yes. Mm. Zanila, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to just, uh, you know, talk about uh, uh, what was um, the gap in series of events. I mean, we, we, we did touch on that a bit, but maybe let's expand on that uh, in the next, uh, just uh, after the ad break. There, my guest is uh, Zandile Zazu, the project manager of the Wellness Initiative by the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, titled SILA. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture's Silapa Wellness Program, uh, which uh, seeks to support the well-being of uh, artists and athletes. Let me bring in uh, my other guest, Ronald Tavaji, the founder and CEO of Healthy um, Living Consulting. Uh, he's joining us in studio this evening as we still uh, continue the conversation with uh, Zandile. Uh, Mzazi from the um, project uh, itself there. Uh, Ronald, uh, a very good evening. Welcome to the show. Great to be with you. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, when we kicked off the conversation, myself and Zazi, we spoke about how important is this Silapa wellness uh, program. Let's talk about you as the people that will be implementing the program. How important is it to be part of this initiative? It's imperative. It's not just a national imperative. This is an imperative for those that inspire the nation through artists and, of course, through our athletes on stages and, of course, on sports field. And when you look at those that inspire the nation, that rally the nation, I think back to Madiba with the first Rugby World Cup. Yeah. That brought the nation together. And every other massive occasion brings communities together. Um, artists as well. We have amazing artists yeah. throughout our land, performing artists, um, uh, you know, dancers and so much more, you know, and they bring hope. And if you don't look after those that bring hope, the opportunity, entertainment for cohesion, you're actually robbing us of what the future could hold. Um, I always say what the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture is looking at is not just how well we perform, yeah. it's how well are we to perform and support together. Mm. I, I mean, we, we also touched on, uh, you know, how the project came about, particularly mm. looking at the challenges that uh, a lot of athletes and, and artists, uh, you know, um, endured during COVID-19 and those that have been, you know, um, maybe losing um, certain endorsements because of other issues and, and, and stuff. Um, the issue of mental health, very serious. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do not come out uh, and, and speak. Uh, how important is it to make sure that we put mental health wellness uh, at the forefront of this? It's imperative because that's the foundation. You know, I always say the mind will control the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at mental wellness, we do know that one in three individuals in the country, adults, even globally, will experience a mental health concern at some point in their lives. Now, when we look at artists and athletes, now remember this program is not just for elite artists and yeah. athletes. It's tiered to even those that are emerging, those who are also, you know, informally performing, but they can prove that they have been either on the sports field or performing. So it's actually all encompassing for all artists and athletes. Mm. Mm. So when you look at the pressures that you are under, when you need to perform, you know, they call it big match temperament. Mm. You know, when you're performing onto stage, you have a persona that you are projecting and for that few minutes, that's what you're doing. But the strain and the stress, not just of performing, but of dealing with, in COVID, financial issues, performance yeah. issues, the pressure of society and your followers and your supporters, all compounds. And the other thing that's important to realize is that we idolize artists and athletes. We hold them up to this persona. So they put themselves under additional pressure and in order to cope, 
mental strain and drain is compounded for them. So mental wellness is absolutely imperative to be front and, 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 and first and center of this program. And what does that mean? We know people that have taken their own lives. Yeah. Ricky Rick. We know people like uh, Double HP. Yeah. We know that it's in, it, it, it impacts them so deeply that they are taking their own lives. Mm. What the Salapa Wellness Program does, and this is what the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture yes. identified, is a need to help them hold a space for their well-being so that they can thrive and inspire the nation. Zandi, let me bring you to this conversation. I mean, yeah. let's talk about how can the greater society, you know, assist in ensuring the success of a program like this? I think, you know, firstly, we have to re recognize that artists are normal people. Yeah. They are like you and I. They are not any different. And the things that they go through are the things that other people also go through and experience. So even though we idolize them, we should understand that at the end of the day, they are affected by the things that are affecting other individuals in the society. So it is very important that people are not scared to talk about the things that are going on in their lives. Now, Silapa has created a space for them to do just that. To call in, the call center is there. You call and you talk about the things that are going, th that you are experiencing or going through. And we have uh, qualified counselors 24 seven that are there to meet these artists and athletes at their point of need. Yeah. So don't be afraid to speak. You need to speak. The society, don't be harsh on artists. We need to give them support because they need that support. So if you don't utilize these services, who else is going to do that? Mm -hmm. Arts and culture, we care about our artists, we care about our athletes, which is why Silapa was even designed. Just to say, we are here for you. Please call in and talk because we understand that mental health is a big thing. It is not something to be played with. You have to allow people to feel free, you know, and be in a space where they know that they can talk about their feelings and they are accepted to do so. Mm. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, before we go for an ad break, Zandile, you spoke about, uh, you know, the call center, um, yes. you know, how people can reach you as a uh, uh, the program there, but uh, is it uh, is walk-ins also allowed, or is it just going to be you know an issue whereby people will just sign up maybe online, or they would call in? Ronald, maybe you can respond. Yeah, to that. absolutely. So what the department looked at was what are the best mechanisms for mm. more people to access yeah. the service. So it's an accessibility issue, and what do most people have in this country? A phone. Yeah. Mm. Whether you have a old school Tamagotchi phone. Um, <laughs> The battery just lasts forever. Yeah. But whether you have a smartphone, mm. it's accessibility to the program because we want to impact as many people as we can. Yeah. So the call center is a toll-free number. Anything that you speak to the call center about mm. is confidential. Yes. And that's how you could access it. You could even send an SMS or a, or a WhatsApp or a please call me. And they will do an outbound call mm. from these uh, uh, counselors to support you on any issue that you may be dealing with. The second thing is the department took this to another level. Yes. The department innovated yeah. with a well-being community platform for artists and athletes. And that is where you click on um, to the platform, on your phone, on your computer, on your desktop, in a public space where there's Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and you register yourself and you can join part of a community where artists and athletes share with each other. There's digital content available. You have access to experts. You go through assessments and get personalized reports and feedback. There are live sessions that happen, and this is where the future is headed towards. And the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture has led this before any other government department has done so mm. for the artists and athletes. Let's park it there. We're going to wrap up the conversation after the ad break as we look at, uh, you know, how exactly is the program going to be implemented? Maybe let's get deep into that. And also, also just to remind the people on how can they get in touch uh, if they want to be part of the program. We're going to take a quick breather. We're coming back after this.
Welcome back, you're still watching So It's Today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. We're getting closer to the end of the show and we're still in conversation on the wellness for artists and sports people. I'm uh, speaking to uh, the CEO of uh, Healthy Living Consulting. That's uh, the founder there, Ronald Avaji and Zandi Lemzazi who is spearheading also the program there. That's still my guest uh, tonight. Um, Ronald, as we talk about the program, and, uh, you know, maybe let's talk about, is it, uh, ha has the implementation of the program uh, started and how has it been so far? You know, Im implementation has started and we've done it organically. Mm. We've gone the route of creating awareness and we've gone the route of sharpening the sword of the program. Yeah. The reality is that when you speak about counsellors and you speak about talking about issues that impact you, a lot of artists and athletes are afraid because of ego and who else will find out. Yeah. So as we build the, the, the principle of confidentiality and free access, even on the community platform, it's a data enabled platform. So you get a certain amount of data so, and to use it so it doesn't chow your data, yeah. right? That's the level of thought that yes. the department put in. So how is the program rolled out? We've gained the traction of over 400 people that have registered on the platform. And these are artists and athletes. Yeah. We've gone the route of media awareness. We've created wellness events. When we have groups of artists and athletes that come together, and there's a lot of them, if they reach out to the program and the department, we will create a wellness experience for them where we can do health risk screenings and we can do talks and engagements at that space for them and then pull them into the ecosystem of the community engagement platform. So the rollout has been amazing, the feedback has been phenomenal, the engagement on the platform and the call centre has actually been very surprising. And as we look at that, the engagement is important because the more awareness you create, you can't guarantee people will use it. Yeah. And this has been a success factor because when we even when we look at corporate wellness programmes, the data and the stats that have been achieved by this Silapa programme is unheard of because of the innovation and the support of the department that has been driving it. Zanile, um, as we wrap up the conversation, before we get the details, uh, you know, on how people can get in touch with you, how important is, you know, uh, partnerships, you know, partnering with stakeholders like uh, uh, Healthy Living Consulting, you know, to make sure that they are spearheading uh, this project and get the intended results. I mean, uh, ultimately, it's about, you know, helping those in need. Uh, and it, it, it is uh, a, 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 a very interesting and a project that is needed at this yeah. point, as we were talking about mental health issues. And stuff. how important is collaboration, you know, with um, um, uh, stakeholders, particularly in rolling out such projects? I think it's very important because when you're thinking about wellness, health wellness, um, you need, it's important for you to work with people that actually have got experience in the field, that are qualified to do the work, that are qualified to implement this program on behalf of us. So it was very important for us to actually uh, work in finding the perfect match. Yeah. So that w we, we form a team, right? So we do different things. So they focus on impl implementing the program on behalf of the department. And as the department, we keep on communicating because this is the program of the department. It is important that when it goes out in the public, it represents the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. So in terms of how this program is being implemented, we, had to, we always have to ensure that the stakeholders understand exactly the, what the mandate of the department is. So we work hand in hand together with our stakeholders. Maybe Ronald can elaborate further a little bit on what I have already mentioned. Mm, I mean, Ronald, as we are wrapping up the conversation, yeah. the importance of collaboration and also how can people, you know, get in touch uh, yeah. Yeah. With, 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 with the program itself yeah. so that they can be able to receive the necessary assistance. Absolutely. So please note, this is not for elite athletes only. Mm. It's also for emerging athletes. So if you have a a drama school or a gymnasium that's been in operation for longer than five years and people have been participating, this program is accessible to you. So stakeholders also go that we take the mandate of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. Workforce is the implementation partner who we support as well, but also we need the federations and communities to come to the party as well because it's for their artists and athletes. 
How do you access the program? And it's quite simple. Yeah. Follow the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture social media mm -hmm. and the details and the posts about the program are available on the social platforms. And you can engage right now, wherever you are, and join this amazing Salapa Wellbeing program. Guys, thank you for coming in. I wish we had more time, but uh, we've know. run out of time. But much appreciated for bringing such a wonderful program uh, to 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 the artists and uh, you know uh, athletes of this uh, of this country. I mean, mental health is a very very serious issue, and mm -hmm. I think uh, as we talk about it now and again, we'll be able also to create our own awareness about it. Much appreciated for coming in. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was uh, Ronald Tavaji, the founder and CEO of Healthy Living Consulting, as well as uh, Zandi Le Mzazi, the project manager of uh, Silampa Wellness. I'm going to ask my colleagues uh, to flight the number, the toll-free number again that, uh, you know, if you want to get in touch uh, with them uh, so that you can be able to, uh, you know, um, uh, speak to the project uh, managers there. Uh, I mean, the uh, people that will be able to assist you if you want to get the necessary assistance, uh, particularly if you have uh, issues that we've been talking about uh, there. That's how we wrap up the conversation uh, today on Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za or you can call or WhatsApp us at 81 for myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team, it's good night from us, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the latest news updates with Mas Chabakobola coming up next. Bye-bye.